so yesterday, and obviously a tragedy, uh, three students were, were killed, eight were shot. I want to make sure. I, so three oh. students were killed, eight were shot at the time of this stream at Oxford yeah. High School in a suburb of uh, Detroit, Michigan, for those who missed it. Oh. So yeah, about 15 minutes outside of Pontiac. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, here's the clip. The deputies removed from the suspect a 9 millimeter Sig Sauer SP-2022 pistol. It was loaded at the time and still contained seven rounds of ammunition. When they took it from him, he had a loaded firearm and he was coming down the hall. Preliminary investigation revealed that the weapon used in the shooting was purchased on November 26th, four days ago, by the boy's father. The gun had uh, 15 round magazines. We found two of them. Okay, so a couple. Of, let me give you an update on what we know right now to make sure you're informed. All references are available at ladderwithcrowder.com. We try and keep this up to date as well. There are other posts. Uh, the alleged shooter right now, from what we know, is 15-year-old Ethan Crumbly. And there were plenty of warning signs before we get to the whole gun control situation, if you see the trends that are going on right now, before the bodies assume room temperature. That's what's so criminal about it. Mm -hmm. um, warning signs like Crumbly allegedly posted a countdown to the return of the devil uh, on his Instagram stories. Uh, the bio... Um, in a second, by the way, now removed Instagram account that was suspected to be the shooter's, uh, it read, now I am become death, destroyer of worlds, see you tomorrow, Oxford. Well, I wouldn't put the name of the school on that with the grammar. That's, yeah, they're probably yeah. upset about that. Yeah, the English teacher. Well, that's a quote, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, and here's something else, uh, and I say this, uh, when I say a YouTube account believed to be the shooters, let me tell you, I don't have this 100% confirmed. Here's why we feel 90-something percent confident that it's from him. Uh, the videos were on a channel that were named after him. Mm -hmm. They have all been since taken down, and third-party sources have confirmed it. Uh, so feel pretty confident in saying yeah. that this is from the shooter on a YouTube channel where he was posting videos uh, you know, involving Molotov cocktails and the like. So, again, rather than the firearms, we have warning signs from this person. I'm guessing parents not paying attention. Even more, his fellow students believed that yeah. something was going to happen before it did. Here's a clip. Something's, something's wrong. So what I'm was, like, you know, what was worrying everybody? There, was, there have been some, uh, some ominous threats posted in recent days. Is that right? Yeah, that is right. There it is. I've been hearing the threats, too. And it's like, you know, kids, they, they play around and say, oh, we're going to shoot up school. Or this. You don't supposed to play around with that. Right. Like, this is serious. You can't do that. So, I mean, like, it's a lot of stuff that's been going on, you know. This school, it's been, it's been tragic. Now, we don't know if it came from the shooter, but there was a, it probably didn't from what I understand. There was a severed deer head mm -hmm. thrown into uh, the school courtyard, and students were concerned. So the school sent out an email that read, there is no present danger, sorry, no present threat of danger at Oxford High School. And then went on to say, before school began this morning, we identified graffiti on the cement outside our pool entrance doors. A severed deer head is graffiti? So many of the students knew about this, and there's probably some more that you're going to get to, but I've, I've been trying to kind of skim through social media and piece together stuff. Yeah. So many people knew about this, and there's reports that students stayed home. Yes. That mm. just yeah. were like, hey, I'm not I didn't going. feel it. We haven't been able to confirm it, but yeah. it does reports. seem that it's very likely. There are reports, yeah, there yes. are reports and that was that even happened. yesterday, yeah. almost immediately yeah. after, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there's also reports that a, a parent, maybe potentially several parents, reached out to the school to find out what was going on prior. So well, we haven't confirmed any of that yet. I'm just saying that there are reports out there for that right now. This is disturbing, there's nothing graphic, but inside the classroom, uh, again, this is a report, kids had to flee, but what you'll see is the initial reports are that the shooter tried to impersonate an officer or someone other than a shooter, and I think what you're seeing is the teacher sending him away, and then the students had to flee out the window. Here you go. Yes! Sheriff's office. Come out. Yeah, he said it's safe to come out. Now we're not willing to take that risk right now. I can't hear you. We're not taking that risk right now. Okay, well, come to the door and look at my bag, bro. No. Yeah, bro. He said bro. He said bro. He said bro. Red flag. <laughs> Go. 
Ladies first, guys. Come on. Yeah, come on. Well, you can't do that. That'd be judgmental. Slow down. You're fine. And I will say, they're very lucky that the shooter was really dumb. Yeah. Like, land shark. Well, so I think well, the, the report is that that actually was a sheriff's deputy that was trying to get in. There was, is that what they changed it now? Yeah, who may have said bro kind of to relate to what he thought right, was a yeah. kid. Well, then they're unfortunate that but the sheriff was really dumb. Yeah, that's not right. what the kids thought. The kids thought that the shooter was trying to get into the room right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But right. they heard bro and they said red who flag. Who are you? Right. Hey, I'm the county sheriff, S.A. All right, get out the window. All right, we're but in uh, Michigan. Uh, that's uh, not admin here. A lot bothers me about that reaction, though. Yeah, uh, that the kids were just kind of laughing and joking around and not letting the girls out first uh, well that but yeah. well i think they were kind of terrified but i think yeah. the, i think the sad part is when you hear the kid going all right guys that's a red flag like th they're so aware of this now as kids like i can't imagine ever being in that situation in high school i just think people yeah. were unaware of it i mean my aunt got her ged because someone was shot in the face she went to school in detroit it was very common I'm not sure where this correlates. <laughs> no, I'm just, no, I'm saying she, they they were just weren't aware of it. They didn't have drills. Oh, there were I still got shootings you. all yeah. the time. Oh yeah, there were shootings all the time. But I mean, the point that there's these massive school shootings where kids now have a language for it is what's scary to me. Yeah, I mean, I think it might have been helpful if, if you look at crime statistics. If people had that language back, I just think people weren't as aware of it. Well, because yeah. Columbine happened when I was a junior in high school, right? And the first thing they did was try to come up with this policy that if it happens, you get under a desk but that you... was not the first we had three mass shootings in montreal people don't understand this. it doesn't happen outside of the united states i don't remember i think there was there was a there was one at concordia there was one at ecole polytechnique where i believe if i'm not mistaken a guy walked in an execution style killed like something teen women some oh, was, wow. it was somewhere between 12 and 15 i want to say 12 Just shot behind the head he sh because uh, he thought that he had lost his job because he was a man and they were hiring more women with quotas i believe that and then there was a concordia wow. shooting and then my friends were in a school uh dawson college when there was a shooting that went on so there were plenty of shootings that t had taken place I, I think a big part of it is that it just wasn't uh they didn't have the timing and the capability of using it as a political tool like columbine and this is something i want to take a moment to recognize uh the oxford high uh, uh the uh high school uh football player tate meyer yeah. tried to save everyone just to be yeah. clear mm. so that's an actual hero tried to disarm the shooter tried to disarm the shooter Shot. not joseph not uh rosenbaum not jojo not yeah. rosenbaum not jojo Ruffalo. not yeah. caitlin jenner not lizzo someone who actively put his life in danger to try and save yeah. and he shouldn't have to now some people on the left will say well he shouldn't have to so we need no guns here's what i want to get to did he uh, can and he quick, was i'm sorry did, did he live no he's he's no dead. yeah he's passed. dead it's yeah, passed away trying to. Absolutely uh, it's really, it's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, but you know what? Uh, yeah, I hope nice. his hope is, if his family is paying it, ho hope you are proud. I, I, I know it doesn't it doesn't ease the pain of these wounds. I can't even imagine. No, but, but that's a real hero, and yeah. I'm, and I'm very yeah. very sorry for your loss. Yeah, yeah. that's he a saved, genuine hero. He saved lives. Yeah, yeah, he saved I mean, a lot of people by putting his own at risk. And exactly, that's, that, it's absolutely disgraceful and that actually brings me to a point we'll never know how many lives he saved what do i mean by that how much time did he buy how many people escaped out the back door how many people were able to get out uh, of the window how many how many deputies and sheriffs and policemen were able to get there who knows it's you're talking about a game of seconds my friend chael talked about this in wrestling practice he had a coach who would say you don't think two seconds is a long time you don't think half a second is a long time okay sit there right now count two seconds count half a second now Take your stove at home, make it as hot as possible, put your cheek on that stove, count half a second. Half a second can be a very, very long time. And in an active shooting scenario, that can be a very long time, just that struggle with this hero. Tate Meyer is the name. I want you to remember it. Now, why does that matter? We can't quantify the amount of lives saved. Just like with firearms, when people are talking about gun control right now, if you look at the number of shootings, people who are killed by firearms in the United States, you take away suicides, it's anywhere between 12 to 20,000 a year, okay? There are, on the low end, 500,000 to over 2 million defensive uses of firearms each year, and the huge majority of them never require a shot fired. You don't know how many lives are saved by someone bringing up their concealed carry, saying, all right, cut it out. You don't know how many people are, they stop rapes, 
they stop muggings. You don't know how many people get killed when there's a mugging. You have no idea if someone says go in the alley and get on your knees, if he plans to take your watch, or if he plans to kill you. So what I am saying is we know that there are far, far more defensive uses of firearms than violent, certainly offensive violent uses of firearms, and you can't even quantify how that could be exponentially more lives saved than just the simple defensive deployment of a firearm. And these are statistics yeah. that are not even, these are not argued, all references available at ladderwithcredit.com. So I want to, when people say, this is what bothers me, when people say, why don't you care about these kids? No, no, why don't you want to do something that actually helps these kids? So here's what I want to get to. Um, 94%, 94% of mass shootings occur in gun-free zones. There is no other more significant uh, significant correlating statistic. What I will say bothers me is when people come out and you'll have these people who say, hey, you know what? Uh, these kids were on psychotropic drugs. You'll hear some podcast hosts do that. Like, look, I get that we overprescribe, but sometimes these kids are disturbed and so they are offered medication. So don't blame Prozac. Don't blame, I'm not saying that all kids should be on it, but that's also lazy. These same people will say correlation doesn't equal causation. Why do you think he was on psychotropic drugs and it still is nowhere clear to 94% of mass shootings occur in gun-free zones? Yes, a lot of them don't have dads. People will say, well, a lot of them maybe were in poor areas. Nope, you can't really say there's a correlation. The strongest, and it's undeniable, 94% of all mass shootings take place in gun-free zones, okay? Now, in a gun-free zone term is the dumbest thing I've ever heard anyway. Yeah. It's like, what do you want to do, make the signs bigger? You think right. that was the problem? Yeah. They were like, oh, I was going to do it, but gun-free zone. Right, gun-free, well, a gun-free zone, or as a mass shooter sees it, Target practice. Yeah, because everybody there doesn't have a gun. I know. And people yeah. say, well, well, what do you think? You're going to be Rambo if you had a gun uh, and fight back? Oh, you know what? To give you a fighting chance. Here, let's change Let's change the scenario really quickly. Why the extreme? Yeah, why the extreme? Let's change that scenario. That was a teacher there in that classroom at the door. Now, apparently, it actually was a sheriff who used the or deputy law enforcement officer who right. used yeah. the word bro. Ugh. Yeah. So, anyway. Um Let's say that was the shooter because that actually does happen. Teacher has a gun, problem solved. Do you honestly think, you think it requires Rambo coming out of the river? No, someone to the door saying, uh, land shark, let me in, bang, bang, bang. Now, people get offended at this idea of teachers being able to carry firearms. I'd, I'm not saying that it will solve. I'm not saying that we will no longer have mass shootings. What I'm saying is that, okay, Let's look at the data. 94% of mass shootings occur in gun-free zones, and many schools are gun-free zones. Nearly all public schools, depending yeah. on state law, but then it's also usually punted to the principal, and we all know that uh, uh, public education administrative officials are not necessarily, it's not necessarily a bastion of conservatism. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what I am saying is it would give that teacher absolutely a fighting chance. Contrast with the gun control proposals right now that you see from the left, and they do this under the guise of caring. I've seen stats as low as 300-something million guns in the United States, and I've seen stats that show it's actually gotten over 400. The only way that the gun control proposals, which you will see on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube right now, which they trend because of the algorithms, unbiased, right? Neutral oh, algorithms. Absolutely. One My that. CPU is a learning computer. Right. A neural net asshole. So <laughs> when you look at those trends, enough. I have no idea. Uh. The only way for their proposals to work is if... All of America is a gun-free zone. If there are any guns, we have 400 million. Let's say you reduce it down to 50 million. That would not stop mass shootings. Mm -hmm. that, would not, yeah. that would not make a dent. And does anyone here actually think we could get rid of two-thirds of half the guns in the United States of America? This is also what's funny when you hear people argue against the drug war and they, they say, well, you know, it'll put drug dealers out of business. Right. They won't move to arms or underage sex trafficking. Drug dealers, the cartel, they don't see themselves in the business of drugs. They see themselves in the business of not paying taxes, whatever they can sell <laughs> illegally, to be clear. So the only way that these current proposals coming from the left could help is if the entire United States, if the entirety of the country was a gun-free zone, and we all agreed, okay, that problem got away from us. Yeah. No more guns, guys. And by the way, that's exactly what they want. They're not arguing. You think the difference here is the fact that the guy had a 15-round magazine Australia. and not a 10? Yeah. You think that that's the difference? You don't think that? Do you have any idea how quick how quickly you can reload a magazine? That would make no difference. Do you think whether it's a 
pistol grip or a rifle grip would have made a difference? No, it absolutely would have would not. Look at the assault weapons ban. Look at these cosmetic differences. Yeah. Look at the gun control proposals. Even a red flag law wouldn't have stopped it because the kid was 15, and I'm going on the information that we have. Now, let me ask you this. If that shooter was at that door and that teacher had a gun, do you think it would make a difference? Of course you would. Watch Louder with Crowder live Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.